this section, we're going to help us unpack this idea of how one set of groups or one set of grouping relates to another set of grouping and some important terminology and understanding of that terminology that goes into that. So let me just give you an example just to help us understand what we might be looking at. Imagine that I'm going to be looking at all the members of my family and the day of the month that they were born. Just create an arbitrary idea. So I was born on the 24th. My wife was born on the 1st. Uh, daughter number one was born on the 30th. Son number one was born on the 16th. And then let's say our pet, grandpa, and he was also born on the 16th. Yes, we have a dog, or we had a dog named Grandpa. He's no longer with us. He lost a, a battle with a car and had a leg amputated. So we had him for several years afterwards. Um, but regardless, we still love him. So here I have a relationship. The relationship between a member of our family and the day of the month that they were born. Well, you look at that then is that we have a domain. A domain represents the first element in each of those relationships. So my domain would include me, my wife, my kids, and our pet. The second element in each of those relationships we call the range. And so if I add all those up together, I look for every element that's unique, 24, 1, 30 and 16. Notice I didn't need to put 16 twice since it was already existing in that element. So what we need to understand is that when we have an ordered pair, a relationship between one idea and another idea, the first idea, idea represents an element in our domain. The second element represents an element in the range. So we need to get a handle on what's the domain and what's the range. This is going to lead us into uh, uh, the important concept that we want to explore is the idea of a function. A function is a very specific type of relationship. A function is where I have every element in my first batch, my domain, corresponds to exactly one element in my range or a unique element in my range. So for example, if I listed our family, and I listed the domain, you'll notice that every element in the first corresponds exactly a unique element in the second. Because that happens, I can say that this relationship can be identified and is identified as a function. All right, Willie, big deal. I see that. I don't really get what you're comparing and contrasting with that. Well, let's say that I looked at this relationship the other direction around. Let's say that all the elements of my domain just for the sake of this illustration, were the birth dates, 24, 1, 30, and 16. And I want to pair them up with the names or the members of the family, 24. It can only match up with one person. Good. One can only match up with one person. 30 can only match up with one person. So far, I have everything making a function. However, here's where it breaks down. 16 matches up with H and it also matches up with, six, with grandpa. Because 16 cannot be identified with a unique value, the relationship set up this way is not a function. It's only a relationship. The other way around, that is a function, and that's a very important distinction that we need to be aware of and start to get a handle of as we proceed through this section.